In the last video, we talked about how light behaves as a wave. However, we left off with the notion that light has a dual nature and also exhibits properties of a particle. Let's first review some wave properties before diving into light as a particle. Take a moment to review each of these questions and give them a try. Pause the video and answer each of the following questions to the best of your ability. First off, which has the longest wavelength? Which has the highest frequency? And finally, which has the highest energy? We should recognize that infrared has the longest wavelength, but x-rays have the highest frequency. And since they have the highest frequency, x-rays would also have the highest energy. Let's tie this review back to some of our early videos about scale with the next question. Which electromagnetic radiation has wavelengths on the order of the sizes of atoms? The answer here is C, x-rays. The naked eye can see objects that are meters and centimeters large. However, it cannot see atoms, which are typically about 0.1 to 0.2 nanometers in size. As a final reminder, short wavelengths or wavelengths with high frequencies are higher in energy. According to the wave model, the energy of the light should be related to its intensity. However, this is not the case. The wave nature of light does not explain the energy of light, as well as some other phenomena. It is very strange that light has properties of both waves and particles, but it does. While some evidence, like diffraction, fits well with the wave model of light, some does not. So we need another model that treats light as a particle. We can't use one model to explain all phenomena involving light. This is where the light as a particle model comes into play. We'll begin looking at light as a particle by discussing the photoelectric effect. You have a piece of metal and shine light on it Sometimes electrons are ejected from the surface, hence the name photo for light and electric for the electrons being emitted. What is happening is that light is transferring energy to the electrons at the metal surface. Here we have metal and we have light shining on it. The light is represented here as a squiggle line. Sometimes an electron is emitted. One way to think about light is that it transfers energy. Light brings in the energy, light hits the metal, and the energy is transferred to the electrons. Sometimes this is enough energy to cause the electron to escape the surface of the metal. There are many uses for this energy from the light, from photocells on solar panels to garage door openers. One might ask why the electrons are stuck to the surface in the first place. Why don't they fall off? Remember from our atomic models unit that electrons are attracted to the positive nucleus within the atom due to their charge. To overcome this electrostatic attraction, the light will need to impart energy on the electrons. Once the electrons gain enough energy from the light, they can escape. Here is a picture of an apparatus that allows us to observe the photoelectric effect. You can explore the photoelectric effect using this simulation by following the link provided. If you follow the link, it will give you the option to download the simulation. Let's take a moment here to explore the simulation. We'll begin by placing the intensity at 50% and the wavelength at 525 nanometers. This just places everything near the middle. First, let's see what happens if we keep the intensity the same, but decrease the wavelength, essentially increasing the frequency. All the small spheres you see are electrons being emitted from the metal. As we decrease the wavelength, the amount of emitted electrons increases. Alternatively, increasing the wavelength while keeping the intensity the same causes fewer particles to be emitted and the particles move slower. At long enough wavelengths, no particles are emitted. Now let's return the wavelength to about the middle and try changing the intensity. If we increase the number of photons, the number of emitted electrons increases. Decreasing the number of photons decreases the number of emitted electrons. Finally, what about if the wavelength is set to low enough energy that electrons are not emitted? 
will increasing the intensity cause electrons to be emitted? We can set the wavelength to 700 nanometers and vary the intensity. It appears that even at maximum photon intensity, no electrons are emitted. Let's summarize. The photoelectric effect provides us with evidence that light is a particle. When high energy light shines on a metal surface, electrons are emitted. If the intensity of the light is increased, more electrons are emitted, but they don't move any faster. Below the threshold frequency, light does not have enough energy to remove an electron from an atom, even if we increase the intensity. If light were a wave, then increasing the intensity would increase the energy, and so we would increase electrons with low frequency, high intensity light. These things cannot be explained by treating light as a wave. These ideas are not trivial and require a shift in our thinking to understand. The key observation that had to be reconciled in a new theory was that there is a threshold for the emission of electrons. There is a minimum energy required to eject an electron. If the light doesn't have that minimum energy, no electrons will be emitted, no matter how high the intensity. This doesn't make sense with the wave theory of light. Einstein came up with a theory to explain this observed phenomenon. This theory was not trivial. It required a paradigm shift. Einstein postulated that light is not a wave, but it is a particle carrying small packets of energy. He called these packets photons. Each photon has a certain energy. The energy of the light only depends on the energy of the photon, not the number of photons. Many lower energy photons will not eject an electron, only a photon with enough energy. When we are discussing phenomena that can only be explained with the particle model of light, we refer to light as photons. However, when we discuss the photoelectric effect, we must model electromagnetic radiation as a particle, not a wave. Particles of energy, photons, hit the metal with energy of E equals H nu. The energy of the photon is directly proportional to the frequency of the light, since it is also a wave, times Planck's constant. You do not need to memorize the value of H, Planck's constant. Each photon ejects one electron if it has enough energy to overcome the attractive interaction between electrons and the nucleus. If the photon does not have enough energy because the frequency is too low, then no electron is emitted. There is no gradual energy cutoff. There is a definite threshold. Either there is enough energy to eject the electron or there isn't. This requires one photon with sufficient energy. Even if you combine several lower energy photons, you won't eject an electron. An analogy that might help with this is, say you have a vending machine that only accepts dollars, not coins. It takes a dollar to buy a Coke. Even though you have four quarters, which are summed to a dollar, you cannot get the Coke because the machine only accepts bills. This threshold energy requirement shows that electromagnetic radiation is a particle. Planck proposed that photons have a quantized energy of E equals H nu. This means that there are only certain energy values that photons can have. They are quantized. Quantization of photon energy is the chief takeaway here. There is no need to calculate the energy of a certain number of photons with a certain frequency. Planck hated the idea of quantization and worked for many years to disprove this idea, but there were phenomena that couldn't be explained any other way. In the end, there is evidence to show electromagnetic radiation as both a wave and as a particle.